Yes, so um, my talk is going to be about um, how to monitor the, um, your Odoo in production and specifically targeted at database logs. So I'm going to explain what, uh, shortly what it is and how it can happen and then how to use uh, some monitoring scripts to, uh, to pinpoint uh, where it is coming from and then how you can fix it. That's, yeah, that's... Uh, that's programming, that's up to the programmer, but at least finding it is already difficult sometimes. Um, yes, so um, yeah, basically what is database locking? Um, it's basically when um, uh, one user wants to lock a record um, and uh, the process is very long, um, then it, uh, any other process who wants to write to that record has to wait for it. And it can even result in the system being down um, because Odoo yeah, has a limited amount of uh, web workers. So yeah, if you have four processes waiting on each other and you have only four workers, the, your Odoo will become unresponsive and you have to restart it. Um, yeah, so how can this uh, come to be? Um, well, like I said, um, sometimes a process in Odoo can take very long. Um, it will write to a record, for example, a partner record. Maybe it will change the partner name or it will update some value on the partner. Um, like, uh, yeah, for example, um, something that, that happens very often in, 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 in daily life is that you have, for example, um, a partner with a number of sale orders and you also have a counter, like which, uh, how many sale orders does this partner have? And your counter is a field on the, on the partner saying, okay, we have now a thousand sale orders for this partner and it's, it's a stored field. So anytime a sale order is added, that counter gets updated then if it takes very long to create a sale order, you already have this problem. Um, another problem can be if you are sending a mail or an SMS in your code, which uh, maybe the, the server doesn't respond. Uh, it can take up to a minute and your Odoo may already be down. So um, we, we can simulate this situation. Um, I have prepared an Odoo, which has a very dangerous button. So if we go to the partner record, for example, um, this one, um, okay, let me show you first like this Odoo is running with with only two workers so it will be down very easily um, so this uh, process is going to start a long write to the to the partner then on the other tab we are also going to try to access this partner So Odoo still seems to work normally. Um, but then if we try to change something on this partner, we are waiting. So we are waiting for this one to complete before this one can now start. So this situation is um, a bit artificial, but it's something that can happen uh, on the live instance quite easily. Um, yeah, so how can you see that something is blocked? Like the first thing you can do is to go into Postgres and to show all the blocked processes. And here you can see there's a process uh, 95 which is trying to update the partner name to Axon2 and is being blocked by another process. 
Um, <laughs> right. So what we have done is we have made a script which executes this um, on a periodic interval. See, it looks if there is any blocking going on. Um, and then tries to, um, to monitor it and to give you um, an idea about where it's coming from. Mm. Yeah, and we do that by using uh, PySpy. So let me just uh, run it. So the monitoring script is something that it should be running in the background, but now I'm just starting it manually. And you see it already has directly found um, a locking instance. And it has started PySpy. Um, and it has written the output to a file. Now, if I open that file, um, it's an SVG file. I can open it. And it will give me a graph of whatever it was that started um, this process that is now blocking others. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot going on in the screen, but the important thing is the what is at the very bottom. Uh, it says start long process. Um, in the module locking demo models rest partner dot by. And then we say, aha, because now we know what caused it. Um, so <coughs> yeah, we can go into the code and say, okay, then let us actually find that module and look at the code and see why it's blocking other processes because it shouldn't be. So this is the function start long process. It's writing the name Donald Duck to the, yeah, to the name of the partner uh, and then goes to sleep for 1000 seconds or maybe even minutes, I don't know. So yeah, um, there we have it. So if we want to fix it, of course we can say, we comment out this sleep and uh, <laughs> it will be fixed. But yeah, in the real life, it's so of course much more complicated. Um, but I'm not going to do that because it's pretty obvious. Um, yeah, so back to the presentation. Um, so basically what we uh, did was just to run this automatically. Like, like you can do this manually. You can start your PySpy um, and you can get this graph. But the problem is if your Odoo has like 10 worker processes um, and maybe that's every day between two and three it happens and you have to sit there and you have to watch all the 10 workers and you have to uh, be very good with your timing and then maybe you can uh, get the right process yeah so that's why you need um, or you can use the monitoring scripts because they will act at the right moment So it's a quite simple script. I can uh, maybe open it in, well, let me just open it first in the, in the terminal. Um, so yeah, it has, uh, it's just one file. It's, um, you can have some kind of uh, configuration options. So you can, the most important ones are here. Um, you can configure uh, how often it checks. So basically how often it runs PSQL to, um, to find the logs. So this is every five seconds, it goes to check if there's logs. Um, then there's uh, the amount of seconds um, between now, actually, the amount of seconds that a uh, lock needs to be old 
in order to be regarded as locking because yeah locking it also happens in the in the normal <laughs> daily life of Odoo. And if you think that 15 seconds of locking is okay, then you should set this higher. You can say, for example, okay, uh, when when the locking, when the process blocks something for over one minute, then that is serious for me. And that's uh, that is when I want to uh, to log um, yeah, to log one of these PySpy spy files. Then, um, yeah, this last one is um, a notification interval. So it can be that um, a log doesn't persist for 60 seconds, but maybe it persists for 600 seconds. Um, and then every minute, uh, the script would think, ah, there's another one, ah, there's another one, but it's still the same one. So. Uh, if you increase this limit, you will only be notified about um, uh, either new ones or about existing ones that were um, that were there. Um, but yeah, only after 600 seconds, you will receive an email about it again. So then uh, in your monitoring, you can uh, you can see that. Uh, then yeah, it's, um, the script also sends out emails, so you can uh, configure uh, the outgoing email address, and you can configure the, the the connection details to your Postgres. And that's basically all it needs, um, except for uh, PySpy itself, um, which uh, should be in the same folder. Yeah, and um, yeah, and Mats. Mats is used to send uh, to send out emails. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, I think this is basically it. So I could dive into the code, but uh, I will just share the the GitHub link to the code uh, later in the Discord group. <laughs> Um, yeah, so to finish up on the presentation, um, so some examples of, of some things we found in, in, in daily life, in live production in instances was, for example, um, uh, some custom code which had been made to uh, fetch bank statements from an incoming email address, uh, which took long because the bank statements were very big. Um, and it also could be like that it would pull in simultaneous emails. Um, so those simultaneous emails would create a help desk ticket with the bank statement as an attachment. Uh, and then there was this lovely piece of code by Odoo itself um, being in the help desk module of enterprise. Can you um, zoom in a little huge bit? percentage satisfaction. Ah, what is this? So every, every time a ticket gets created, um, the percentage of satisfaction with the with the help desk team is recalculated. Um, so yeah, if your help desk um, ticket creation takes very long and you have simultaneous help desk tickets being created, then all of them are trying to update the same fields on the on the help desk team which causes locking. So yeah, it's, you can see how easy it is to make such a mistake because even the, the perfect and wonderful Odoo programmers uh, of enterprise uh, would, uh, would include something like this in their code and not realize that it would impact others. Ah, yeah, and in that particular case, they also would do the, the bank statement reconciliation in the same transaction, so yeah. Of course, that's not very smart, but you never know what you get when you get a new customer. Um, you can get inherited some very messy projects. Um, yeah, this is an ex another example whereby um, the hosting server of the customer had a, a file, an open file limit, 
And um, we also managed to find that uh, due to the Pipe Pi information, because it was always hanging on uh, opening a new file when the server was very busy. So these kind of things you can find using the monitoring scripts. Um, I was to talk about um, uh, memory also, like we have made a similar kind of script which checks uh, if, uh, if one of the ODU workers spikes in memory and then is also doing a by graph, but I didn't have time to finish it. So I will leave it at this. Okay. Well, thank you, Tom. Uh, it was a really nice presentation and great tools. Um, so thanks for sharing this. Um, for day-to-day -day monitoring, I'm used to uh, using PG activity, which is a kind of top-like uh, script uh, to monitor the uh, current transactions and logs. And uh, it, it's also nice, but I, I really like the uh, PySpy uh, usage you're making here to uh, pinpoint things. So uh, yeah, that's that's really really nice. Yeah, it's like sometimes the missing link. You uh, you know which mm -hmm. query was causing it, but you don't know what uh, yeah, what code, code was generating it. And speaking of cases where things creep up uh, really quickly, I remember a case uh, on a customer project where we were importing uh, purchase orders in batch, um, and uh, confirming the purchase orders uh, uh, on the fly. And uh, no, actually it was, uh, yeah, uh, purchase, uh, supplier bills. And uh, we were importing for some suppliers who had a large Excel file with, uh, with bills. And doing so, mm -hmm. uh, it was incrementing the sequence of the, uh, of the invoices and locking uh, the whole, uh, yeah. everyone in trying to manually confirm an invoice had to, had to wait for, for this. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> a bit of a, an awkward situation. And yeah. Of course, we discovered that uh, when many people started using the system concurrently. Yeah, that's the, the, the pain of it, because you only start noticing it when the system becomes used uh, mm -hmm. very heavily. And then um, they say it yep. was working in the beginning. In the, in, the, in the first week, it was working fine. Exactly. And uh, yeah, it's also a matter of uh, the, the customer complains in such case by saying, Odoo is slow. <laughs> and there are two kinds of slow. Uh, there's slow because the operation takes a lot, a, lot, a lot of time. And there's slow because the operation is blocked by something else and actually doing nothing. And these are two totally different uh, kinds of slowness and you need different kinds of tools to uh, to study, study them. And actually, mm -hmm. we end up using PySpy to, uh, to check for the uh, slowness because of inefficient code. And I really like the, the bridge you're making here uh, to use it to pinpoint what is uh, what could be causing uh, a, a leak, so um, and it's totally better than what I'm currently doing, which is sending a, a, a kill uh, dash up to <laughs> get a stack trace uh, in the logs. So um, I think I'll, I'll put your tool in my in my tool case. You didn't nice. know about that one, <laughs> the kill. <laughs> Kill dash hub. <laughs> uh, I didn't know about that trick actually. It could at least give you the stack trace, which is also useful. Yep, yep, yep. It causes every process to uh, to dump a stack hmm. in the logs. Uh, there are a few uh, signals that you can use on Odoo. They are not well documented, but you'll find them in Odoo slash uh, server .py. Ah, Nice. Yeah, I will take a look. Uh, do we have other questions uh, here? Checking the chat. Um, maybe I can check in the... Nothing. It can be on three places, right? In YouTube and in Discord. Uh, yep, YouTube I haven't checked. Um, hmm. 
so no other questions so far. Um, or, yep. And for the peak usage uh, you were seeing, uh, so it's a similar script, or are you uh, checking that, coupling that with the uh, soft limits and hard limits? Well, soft limits, because hard limits is going to kill the process anyway. Uh, of uh, of Odoo settings, uh, you're asking about the the memory part. Yes, uh, the, the part that we didn't get a chance to see. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if there are no questions, I still have time, so maybe I can. This is the other script, so the the basics are the same. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have the the same um, settings, but then uh, in order to get the the misbehaving workers. Um, I have to check. I think we did something like PS. Okay. Um, actually, I forgot. But yeah, so yeah, here's a command like PS and then output the memory. And I think it saves the, uh, the previous scene value mm -hmm. of the memory. So if it suddenly spikes and um, um, it's it's higher than a certain percent. I think here you can set. Oh yeah, this is a, the percentage of total memory in the system. So if it starts exceeding that, then um, it will pass by and send out the mail. Okay, that's nice too. One of Are you used yeah. to uh, yeah. any other tool for that by any chance? Mm, or? No, no, no. We didn't have any, well, you, usually we tune the, uh, soft and hard limits of uh, of Odoo. Uh, but there's this issue with the soft limit and hard limits is that uh, it takes into account the uh, consumptions of child processes. And when you start using uh, WKHML to PDF to, uh, to print reports, uh, you get really large amounts. So we can mitigate this with a, a container <coughs> Um, which was developed uh, by Axon, uh, which is nice. Uh, it includes a, a fake WKHML to PDF binary uh, that you can use, which delegates the actual generation of the PDF to another process running in a different container. Oh, nice. And so uh, you can yeah, kind of uh, save this because now the... Uh, the memory is uh, very the, the, the footprint of that binary is uh, is very small, uh, but we didn't have any uh, monitoring for the uh, for the memory itself. Hmm. Usually, yeah, it's we, mostly for those dock. cases where you have like custom code, which uh, mm -hmm. which is doing some super big and heavy file yep. loading or parsing or something like that. But it's rarer than uh, the. Um, the the locks uh, in my experience and we generally find these out by monitoring in the logs of Odoo the uh, workers being recycled because they exceeded the soft memory limit hmm. good okay. well, well um, thanks a lot for this presentation I think the uh, next talk yeah starting in five minutes um, Okay, well, let's go for a small break. And then, uh... Yep, and if people have uh, questions, uh, of course, they can ask you directly on Discord. Uh... Yeah, I'm now posting the link to the script there. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, thanks for hosting. Have a nice day, Tom, and see you, you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.